Next, it's my honor to introduce Christine Kretz from the International Space Station U.S. National Laboratory. Christine Kretz is the Vice President of Programs and Partnerships for the ISS U.S. National Laboratory managed by CASIS. Kretz's role is to identify opportunities for leveraging the facilities of the ISS to enable science and technology research that will benefit life on Earth while maximizing taxpayer investment in the ISS. Kretz's team helps interested organizations determine how to best approach research on this on station and work through the process to accomplish the desired objectives. Uh, Christine, we're honored to have you today. So it's uh, all yours. Thanks so much. I hope you can hear me okay. And, and thanks, Dan, for the, the, the kickoff there, because this is a great follow on. Next page. <clears throat> So as, as Dan mentioned, the, the uh, National Lab was created from a need, and that was to give access to uh, non-NASA type um, research to be able to use the facilities on the space station. Next one. And so Congress designated that space to use about 50% of the capacity that uh, NASA has on those resupply missions. Um, to use the facilities that we'll talk about here that are uh, using uh, the, the types of environment that you can find in the space station, microgravity, the remote uh, sensing opportunities, and then the harsh conditions of space that are just not available on Earth. So these are the facilities that are made available through the partnership with NASA to use 50% of that capacity. We're talking about how you fund this and how you spark the kind of of, of efforts that would use research on, on station. And part of what this did, the ISS National Lab, was create a funding mechanism so that organizations who wanted to try space, who wanted to do something in space, could access these facilities, but not have to pay the bill for the rocket ride up and back and for the use of the astronaut hours, which are pretty expensive um, um, hourly rates. So to be able to do that, Congress designated our use of, of the astronaut time in the facilities um, as a way to, to supplement potential research and to provide that to organizations that you'll hear from today, whether it's Adidas as a company or a startup or universities that could be doing research. If they had to pay for that initial ride up and back and, and the use of crew hours, it would just be cost prohibitive. So, as Steve talked about, that there has to be some way to make things uh, cost feasible. And over time, we're going to have to find ways to make the cost, which will transfer over to product makers. We're going to have to make that so not so overpriced that it becomes impossible uh, for anybody to be able to, to create something or do research in space. Because over time, this platform... Um, will move to a commercial platform, as Dan pointed out, whether it's Axiom or other uh, potential uh, private providers of that platform, it'll either have to be supplemented by government and NASA money, um, or it will have to become paid for because it's affordable by the users of the platform. Either way, there's going to be a cost and we have to be able to manage that cost. Was there a question? All right, I'll keep on going. Next page. So in an effort to focus, because there's only so much capacity and there's there's only so much room, uh, there's a lot of demand for the, 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 uh, the use of the payloads. Um, in Dan's chart, he, he had gone quickly by the number of payloads growing on the ISS National Labs uh, allocation. From the first year, just a handful single-digit numbers to as high as 90 um, new projects that are approved a year to a total of over 200 um, research payloads projects that have been um, sent to the space station and, and more coming. And so in order to try to make sure that we're making the most of the allocation that we have, over time we've focused on a couple of areas with the desire for these areas and advanced materials and manufacturing and in-space production applications, which includes things like regenerative medicine and cellular biology, but all with the idea of it being much more of a commercial product 
the goal there is to create part of an economy where there's a product in space that is saleable, that makes money, that's part of business. So the focus from the ISS National Lab, while we still have places for STEM research and we still have places for fundamental science, a lot of what we're trying to use our limited grant money for and our capacity for is focused on these two areas and um, ideas around productization. And so when I'm followed by Henry and Yusuf, they're going to talk to you about areas where they're working, which really fits this focus area of advanced materials and in-space production. Next page. So as I said, what we're able to give due to taxpayer dollars is an allocation allotment um, and tiny, tiny little bits of grants and then the use of crew time so that we can get your, your work done. But there's a way to access us. Um, one of the ways to do that is through research announcements, and those are open right now in STEM and in space production, and a new tech dev will follow. So those are three areas that you will see in continuous rotation over the course of the next year. If you're in any of those places, you'll wanna to go to our website and see how you put in, into the process your proposal. These are small dollars in the big part of this is just the allocation that we're able to provide so that you can do your research. Um, and the other place is commercial service providers. So Dan talked about the, the implementation partners who have built platforms, who've made these COTS uh, efforts and built upon the kind of services that were available so that it de-risks the, the kind of work that's going on up there, commercial service providers. Some of them have a user agreement with us, which allows them to take your funded project, submit it for approval, making sure it's feasible and scientifically sound, and they can put through your proposal with that request. There's also some sponsored programs that include government agency sponsored programs, NIH, NSF, and along those lines of sponsored programs, we work with companies like Boeing, who sponsors the Mass Challenge program, which is an accelerator. And through that accelerator, we have identified and, and are funding or have funded over 20 projects that are moving toward their research and, and eventually into a commercialization. Mass Challenge is the accelerator where we were able to work with Dr. Urkel and the project that he's going to talk to you about, but others are already also moving forward in areas of largely biomedical manufacturing research, coming through those incubators and with the support of, of other companies like Boeing, we're able to see them along into their uh, in, into a research opportunity, and it will be one of of many flights that a company has to make in order to prove out their technology. So it shouldn't surprise anybody because, as we said, space is hard. Things don't always work the first time, and you don't find complete answers to your research in one flight. So these wind up being multiple flights, multiple efforts that have to go to the station. So those are ways to access us. Next page. But the focus, I would say, from any research that's going on through the ISS National Lab, supported by this, needs to benefit life on Earth. So the difference between what the National Lab is able to support for research and what NASA is able to focus on is that ours needs to have benefit to life on Earth, have a function for you know, planetary use. If it also can be used for exploration, that's good, but its sole function should not and should not be on exploration, which is NASA's role. And NASA continues to lead in that area. So if you ever submit a project to us and it really is about how to put something on the moon, I'm going to refer you back over to Dan and some of his colleagues because that's really a focus area for them. It's still commerce. It's still going to be important. It's still going to drive some of the things that we talked about initially in, in this conversation. Um, but it really will have to be um, something that NASA supports. And with that, I'll move off, and I'll, I'll let you move over to uh, talking to my colleagues who have actually done some research projects and flown some work. Thank you.